Good evening everybody, I'm Stripey! And welcome to our paintball review series. Paintball movie review series. This particular video is our first, hence uh, this introduction. But I just wanted to advise you. We will be reviewing two types of paintball movies in the next few episodes. Movies that are based around the game of paintball. And movies that have paintball scenes in them. They are all fiction though. We are not reviewing paintball documentaries and instructional videos. Because the Snarky Show is entertainment based, not education based. Okay, so our first movie for review is Combat Academy. Filmed in 1986. You'll notice this video is made in 4x3 full screen format. Despite the fact that YouTube is now 16x9 format. That's because this copy of the movie which was on VHS that we're reviewing is also 4x3 aspect ratio. Now you can tell right away that this movie is inspired by Police Academy. And also has other similarities to other 80s movies, such as Animal House and Revenge of the Nerds. So the story is about two teenage pranksters named Max Mendelssohn and Perry Barnett. Principal Thompson, Eastfield High. Dear sir, Perry and I are very sorry about the situation we've caused, and as soon as we can figure out which one of us is responsible for your daughter's child, we'll immediately give you a call. I really like these guys. Now if you remember, we were prepared to present in our defense all sorts of very real sounding evidence implicating Mrs. Kushner. They do a lot of damage with their practical jokes! <laughs> oh, we don't want to be! Who's responsible? He is! No, he is! Right. However, the shit gets real when a judge sends him to military school! And so, I am sentencing you, Maxwell Mendelssohn, and you, Percival Barnett, to the full school year at the Kirkland Military Academy. This movie has some pretty cool characters in it. It's got the guy Jamie Farr from M.A.S.H. Whoever this cadet is, he moves around like a monkey on a barbed wire fence. He appears in a minor role. And then there's Richard Moe, who appears as the imbalanced chemistry and music teacher. Beryllium, sodium, magnesium, potassium, calcium, scandium, potassium, rubidium, strontium, and that's what we call doing the bop. And of course, George Clooney as Major Biff Woods. You will speak when spoken to, Private, and you will salute a superior officer. So of course, in this fish-out-of-water story, the movie is kind of predictable. The guys go to military school, but the pranks continue. However, things start to get tough when the boys are told that they will not be kicked out. And things are only going to get harder. The people who sent you here won't allow me to throw you out under any circumstance. However, this movie has one main plot and three subplots in it, making it more like a soap opera and less like a comedy. And I warn you, spoilers ahead. First of all, there's the plot of Max and Perry. They get torn apart by differing points of view as to being in the military school. From now on, just do me a favor and stay away from me. And Perry has enough of the practical jokes. But they have a makeup scene, and all is well again. So that's it, we're okay? Yeah. Yeah, well, of course we're okay. We're not gonna stay mad at you. You're responsible for 60% of the greatest moments of my life. Stuttering Perry also develops a love interest in fellow cadet Mary Beth. When she falls over and twists her ankle during the first war game. Good. 
Well. Thank you for being so sweet. <laughs> they get together. The yellow, black, and gold. Then drift apart when the old boyfriend shows up. But don't worry, they get together again at the end and all is well. My lips are yours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -oh. And then there's the story of Major Biff Woods, played by young George Clooney, who in a daddy doesn't love me type of rebellion, steals watches. I'm the thief, Dad, not Max. Everything that's been stolen, it's all me. This leads to him falling out with Dad. What is wrong? What's my name? But after a bit of a male bonding scene with Cadet Mendelssohn. I can't figure you out, Mendelssohn. They make up for a happy ending. I know. And of course, now we get to the main plot of the film. <laughs> the story goes that some Russian military cadets are coming over to compete in war games. Russians. Who like Bill Cosby. I love Bill Cosby. The first paintball scene kicks off, and I seriously marked out to see what I think are Sheridan KPs and PGPs. Now... In this exercise, we'll be using paint pellet guns representing the orange and the yellow teams. Everything is stock gas using 12 grams and tube fed. It's Johnny Rim! Mendelssohn Barnett, what are you two doing? Get back here! Of course, since these are actors, we don't see them reloading or carrying any spare ammo or stock class harness or anything like that. But just listen to that sound! Fire! That hollow sound of a brass gun! Isn't it just wonderful? Let's hear it again! Madison, you're dead! Is the flesh wound? One more time! The second paintball scene is more of the same, except they're against the Russians. It's a somewhat unrealistic paintball game, and yeah, they're taking off their shop goggles again. Blue squirrel to gray fox, come in. But hey, they're just actors, and it's a 1980s film. Just be happy at least the sound effects are authentic. Unlike Class of 1999 Part 2. The film ends with the obvious political Let's Be Friends ending. Why does there have to be a winner and a loser? Look, we played a game. Now bear in mind the time period that this film was made in. 1986. 1985 to 1991 was the period of Mikhail Gorbachev and the de-escalation of the arms race between the United States and Russia. But even at this time, there was still a lot of distrust between these countries. So, while it looks very cheesy today, this is kind of what the public needed to see in 1986. I mean, if you guys can't think for yourselves enough to see that we don't know each other well enough to hate each other, then you go on home. And you tell your fathers to come over here and beat up our fathers. And then when they're all done with each other, we'll let the mothers decide the fate of the world. My friend, I would like to come to your house and eat off your table. Not to date your sister, who you don't have. She's going to be very disappointed. Yeah, yeah. 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 So to sum up, I did like the subplots of the film. At least you can't criticize the characters for having lack of character development. But despite the big names that appeared in this movie, it was a flop and was released on videotape, destined to be forever 
a substandard TV movie. What did you think about the movie, Snarky? I like the Sheridan KPs! Anything else? How about the story? Or the Russians? Or the production errors? Um... I like the PGPs too! Well, thanks for watching. Check us out next time when we review another paintball movie. Bye! This is hell!